Right, some controversy has erupted. Surprise, surprise. In one of the online uh, um, open stage forums I follow. Um, it's actually like an acoustic musician. But it's a question about open stages. And uh, it's actually come up a couple of different times in a couple of different formats lately. So I thought I'd uh, address it here. I, like a fool, did wade in online, even though you all have told me repeatedly to stop doing that, but I will never learn my lesson. And so here it is. The, on the question of a tip jar, as an open stage host, do you have a tip jar? Who gets the tips? Open stage participants. Would you like to get the tips? Which does seem like a loaded question. <laughs> Nonetheless, um, here's how I Here's how I see it. So I do have a tip jar as an open stage host. This is a, a paid gig for me, um, but I do put out a tip jar because, you know, my observation is that almost all the tips I receive are from the players, from the participants, and they're clearly intended as an appreciation of the experience they received. Um, and so I gladly and graciously receive their appreciation as intended. Um, you know, there's only a, a few ways the tic-tac-toe of this, this situation works out. You either have a tip jar or you don't. And if you do, you either keep the tips or you share or completely distribute the tips. Um, so I have only known one host who shared the tips with the players. Um, notably, that was my sort of idol and mentor, John Steideman, who was the host of the Paris, Paris on the Platte open stage that I religiously attended in high school. Um, he offered sort of as an, as an incentive towards community building and kind of nudging people to adhere to the, the great unwritten rule that we support each other and we stay to the end. That... Uh, he would split the tips between himself and the players who remained at the end. Um, and that worked in large part due to the fact that Paris on the Platte was maybe the most bustling late night coffee shop that I've ever been to. I'm not saying in the world, I haven't been everywhere. Um, but, for instance, for, for scale, when I used to play there as a gigging player, I would routinely make $200 in tips on top of, uh, you know, my guarantee. So, not that the open stage made $200 in tips, but you could pretty much count on. There was going to be enough in the tip jar that even if every player had stayed, everyone would get a, get a few bucks, which is a little something, a gesture, uh, as opposed to like trying to split $6 eight ways or something silly like that. Um, so anyway, that's how I feel about the tip jar. I think uh, some of the controversy at least pushback on me has been me saying something that I think is patently obvious, which is, you know, in the economics of the open stage, the players, as a rule of thumb, understand this is not a paid gig for them. They're here for their own reasons. They're here primarily to get stage time without a gatekeeper. Uh, stage time is hard to get. It's hard to get gigs. It's hard to book gigs. An open stage is a way that you can just you show up and you play and everything's taken care of for you. That's a service. And I think everybody understands, um, again, there will always be exceptions, but that's a fair exchange. That's what open stages are. You are, as the host, you are selling the experience, the time, the stage time, the sound, uh, the sound support, to the players and that is what they receive for showing up and the what you're selling to the venue is the attendance so you know players don't expect to make tips they don't think this is a paid gig they don't think 
but there's a you know uh, a clamor from from the riffraff that it's the players who are making you know who are making the music and are earning the tips and while I can kind of see their point a little that's not been my observation as a host my observation as a host has been that tips tend to be from the players I have one time made sort of a, a judgment call that someone showed up to play and play at the open stage and they had uh, about you know probably 50 friends show up and start putting money in the jar that was one where clearly those people saw this more simply and so I, I think you, you do have to kind of keep an eye on, on what's going on. Um, as a player, like doing open stage tours, I know I'm not getting any a piece of the action. What I do is I try to talk up, hey, if, if you'd like me to come see me about merch, about stickers, about, you know, the things that I'm actually peddling, come talk to me. And, and I've heard lots of other... You know, when pros or, you know, musicians kind of have their act together and have that kind of stuff ready, come to my open stages, they'll do very similar things. You know, come talk to me about this thing I have. I have these shirts. I have these CDs. I have vinyl. I have cassettes. All these things are coming back, and I got rid of most of mine in New York. Um, anyway, this has gone on long enough. Okay. Any event. Until next time, see you at the other stage.